Thank you, Martin, and thanks to the organizer for inviting me to give this presentation. Um, this is mainly focused on a series of studies we did during the last three years on uh, these marsh using uh, different mixtures. Um, I will briefly summarize what are these compounds and I will pass through very rapidly because this is very well described in the, in the um, dossier which is written, uh, which was on the desk and which is written by uh, Birgit uh, Geuke. So, first, the mineralogists are a very complex mixture, more than 100,000 different compounds, meaning that th this is really an, alight an, an analytical issue which is not so easy to address. Uh, the technical grade mineral oils typically contain not only mosh but also moa. And uh, for food grade mineral oil, hydrocarbon products, uh, which are uh, hydrogenated, uh, the uh, aromatic content of these uh, food grade mineral oils is uh, minimized. And uh, due to the complexity of these mixtures, the composition of commercially available um, uh, products are very, I would say, very roughly described and uh, the characterization is mainly based on physical chemical properties such as uh, viscosity or boiling point or something uh, like uh, that. And uh, products with the same physical chemical properties uh, may vary considerably in terms of components. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. So we have two ma major classes of compounds in these mixtures. The first one is what we call paraffins or alkanes with uh, linear alkanes and branch alkanes. And the second, groups, uh, the second group is uh, the naphtenes, which are naphtenic hydrocarbons having a, 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 a cycle here and the chain uh, which can be branched or uh, linear. The sources of marsh in food are not only from food contact material, but also some are of natural origin, others are from environmental contamination, others from food processing. And more precisely regarding food contact materials, there are several origins possible. Uh, jute and sisal bags can be treated with marsh. Uh, waxed packaging materials exist. Plastic materials can release marsh. Uh, lubricating oils for can can be a source of marsh in food, printing inks. Also, recycled boards and adhesive are also uh, important sources of marsh in food. Regarding the uh, toxicological targets of marsh, <coughs> it is well known for, for a long time that marsh have low acute oral toxicity. We also know that uh, marsh can, at very high doses, can cause uh, liver hypertrophy. And we know also that marsh having a carbon number um, uh, atoms between uh, 16 and, and 35 may accumulate in different tissues, especially in adipose tissue, in liver, in lymph nodes, in spleen, and uh, moderately in uh, all the tissues. And this accumulation uh, results in liver in the, forma in the formation of micro uh, microgranulomas 
and uh, these microgranulomas are also present in uh, uh, lymphatic nodes. But uh, in lymphatic nodes, uh, these uh, uh, granulomas are not considered of toxicological concern due to the fact that uh, they do not result in uh, an inflammation process of the tissue. Um, food grade uh, marsh may differ in the uh, bioaccumulation uh, potential and of course in their ability to cause uh, li uh, liver granulomas. And uh, there are some evidence that some saturated hydrocarbons are able to induce autoimmune responses in animals when they are administered at high concentration, mainly via a parenteral route. So, um, the studies we performed were the objective of this study was to, uh, were to investigate uh, the accumulation of uh, different marsh mixtures. And the, the aim was to identify the marsh fraction uh, and the subcategories in this fraction which uh, could accumulate at a higher uh, rate and which could result in the formation of microgranulomas. And we also investigated the potential immune perturbation of marsh mixtures. <coughs> Oops, sorry. So we prepared. Okay. So we prepared um, a mosh mixture with approximately the same constant concentra concentration of um, hydrocarbon per carbon atom, and this mixture was prepared by combining several several uh, different white oils. Then, um, we exposed uh, fisher rats, female fisher rats, to this mixture for uh, 90 days and uh, with uh, uh, sampling time after one, two, three months and four months. And part of the animals after 90 days were submitted to a, the control uh, diet to investigate uh, the depuration of the compounds in the different tissues. Uh, three different concentrations uh, were tested, 40, 400 and 4,000 ppm. And of course, the control received uh, the control diet. Then the Different, tis different tissues were sampled, the liver, the adipose tissue, uh, the spleen, and the remaining carcass, and uh, MOSH analysis were uh, carried out in these tissues. For testing the uh, immune function, five days before the end of the experiment, the animals were treated with the antigen which was in that case k hole input hemocyanin. These are the results we obtained in the different tissues in terms of uh, accumulation of marsh. So you can see there that uh, the uh, <coughs> concentration in liver reached uh, f more than 5,000 milligram uh, per kilogram of tissues and uh, with the plateau after uh, approximately three months. And the, during the depuration period, the concentration in the liver decreased significantly in uh, this tissue. In fact, accumulation was 
at uh, more limited uh, uh, rates, uh, reaching approximately 250 uh, milligram per kilogram uh, uh, of uh, milligram per kilogram of tissue of fresh tissue after uh, four months and uh, without uh, reaching the plateau at the end of the experiment. These values, the green curve, is for the highest dose tested. You have here the, the, the lowest uh, concentration tested. And uh, the concentration in the spleen was uh, more or less as in, in the fat, and uh, in carcass, the concentration was lower than in, in fat and spleen. These are the profiles uh, of the mosh in the different tissue. Here is the profile in, the, in feed distributed to uh, the rats. And this is the profile in the liver. And you can see uh, that the concentration in the liver, the, the maximum retention is around uh, C29, 29 carbon atoms. And uh, without accumulation of uh, chain having less than 23 or 22 carbon atoms and more than, I would say, uh, 35 carbon atoms. The profile in, in fat tissues is different. The accumulation is mainly of low boiling point uh, alkanes, as it is the case in carcass. And in the spleen, we have a situation which is more or less similar as uh, in liver. If we try to uh, know more precisely uh, what is the composition of MOSH in terms of broad classes, um, First, in, in the, the broad mixture, the characterization of the broad, broad mixture we used was uh, approximately 31% of N-alkanes and uh, little branched paraffin. These two categories are not easy to separate, so they are considered uh, as a group. Uh, approximately 10% multi-branched paraffins and approximately 60% of uh, daftines. And if, uh, when we investigated uh, this uh, composition in liver and spleen, we have seen that the composition was more or less the same as in the, uh, in the, in the initial mixture. Um, but the situation was different in adipose tissue with a significant shift of the mixture to the open chain hydrocarbons. Now about the effect. As expected, the first effect was um, uh, an hypertrophy of uh, the liver, uh, the, um, the absolute and relative weight uh, of the liver, and this was observed at the highest dose tested, uh, and it was observed as soon as uh, after one month of exposure, and this uh, effect disappeared uh, during the depuration period, meaning that when uh, we uh, distributed the, the control uh, diet to the animal previously exposed to uh, the mosh mixture. No more effect were, was observed in the, in, the, in the liver weight and the spleen weight. In the liver weight, no, no effect at all on concerning the, sp the spleen with the, this mixture. In terms of, uh, micro, of uh, microgranulomas, what we observed is uh, uh, a significant increase of 
microgranulomas in the liver of animals exposed during four months to the four, during three months or four months to the mixture, and this effect uh, didn't disappear after uh, when the the uh, uh, exposure ceased, because we we also s uh, have, s have this effect in the the animal. Uh, sacrificed after the uh, depuration period. Um, about the effects on all the targets, um, we measured the uh, number of lymphoid clusters in the liver, and which is a, a marker of uh, liver inflammation, and uh, as expected, uh, we saw an increase in this uh, lymphoid cluster, but we didn't see any effect regarding uh, the uh, immune system. Oops, sorry. So we tested um, different mixtures, uh, and uh, the idea was to try to know more precisely uh, what type of category of uh, saturated uh, hydrocarbon could accumulate in the, the, the different organs and what category of hydrocarbon uh, were the drivers of the effect on the liver in terms of uh, granulomas. So we prepared four different, uh, um, uh, three different mixtures, sorry. Um, a mixture uh, with uh, uh, carbon chain hydrocarbon uh, lower than, I would say, 30, uh, uh, 30 uh, uh, carbon atoms of uh, don't, so um, a low viscosity uh, mixture uh, uh, a paraffin wax uh, with high viscosity meaning um, chain uh, length higher than 25 uh, carbon atoms and a third mixture in which we used the previous mixture of uh, of high viscosity in which we added uh, waxes uh, and uh, more specifically um, uh, and alkanes uh, with uh, uh, a chain length centered on C32, uh, C34. And we didn't test uh, the wax as such. Same, same type of experiment, always on fisher rats, female fisher rats, and uh, with uh, only one sampling time after four months of exposure, three concentration tested, 400, 1000, and 4000 ppm and of course a control group, and the same tissue sampled for marsh analysis and for histological examinations. Oh. So, what we observed is um, the major accumulation was for the mixture having a short chain uh, alkanes, uh, and this is a case in all tissues, in liver, fat, uh, spleen, and the remaining carcass. Um, then the second one was the mixture with the, the uh, N alkanes added for the liver, for the spleen, it was not the case. The, the, the addition of N-alkanes resulted in the lower accumulation of the mixture in the spleen. 
and um, the fat, the adipose tissue, have the same uh, behavior as uh, the liver and the carcass uh, also have the same, more or less the same uh, uh, accumulation uh, profile as, uh, as the liver. In terms of, uh, of accumulation, uh, the, in that case, the accumulation was very high since we obtained for the highest dose tested more than uh, 14,000 milligram per kilogram mosh in the liver for the lower chain uh, mixture. In terms of effects on the liver, same uh, effects on the um, uh, absolute and relative liver weight. In that case, we also observed in an effect on spleen, and the effect was much more important for the mixture in which we uh, have added uh, the N-alkenes. And in terms of granulomas, much more granulomas uh, in rat exposed to, expose to the mixture with um, additional N-alkanes, uh, since even at the lowest dose tested, uh, we observed a significant uh, effect on uh, the granulomas. Um, The uh, effects on uh, the liver inflammation, we didn't see uh, any effect with the, uh, the lowest dose, the, the, um, low the low viscosity mixture, but um, uh, um, a significant increase for the uh, mixture having the highest uh, carbon chain length. Um, the, for the, the mixture in which N-alkanes were, uh, were added, uh, we observed a, a strong inflammation and, um, in all the tissues investigated. And as we observed for the broad mixture previously tested, we didn't see any effect on the immune system. So in terms of accumulation, what we can say that is accumulation is of mosh occurs mainly in the liver and to a lesser extent in adipose tissue. The accumulation depends on the composition of mosh, mosh mixture. There are strong differences between liver and adipose tissue in terms of accumulation profiles. The depuration period results in a significant decrease of mosh concentration in the liver, but not in the adipose tissue. We, we can also say that the depuration period did not result in um, uh, a decrease in the number of uh, granulomas. And in terms of uh, accumulation, not only N-alkanes, but also isoalkanes accumulated, accumulate in uh, liver and adipose tissue. In terms of effect, uh, the first observ observed effect is uh, an increase in the absolute and uh, relative liver weight of uh, the mixtures. Um, there are really large differences in the ability of the different mosh mixer to induce liver granulomas. It seems that N-alkanes, at least in this strain, uh, results in um, um, an increase in the number of uh, liver granulomas in the animals. And... Um, uh, we 
also observed that uh, uh, a strong correlation between uh, the presence of granulomas and uh, the increase in the uh, inflammation markers. We didn't see any effects for all the mixtures tested on the uh, immune system. And, well, the, the message from this study is that uh, the classification of MOSH by molecular masses, and uh, which is uh, below or above uh, C25, is not supported by uh, our finding, findings. I thank you for your attention.